All right, so the other day I saw this problem on X, and so I thought we would give it a try and uh, see if we could solve it. So let's let's see here. All right, so we've got this triangle. Uh, we've got a circle inside the triangle. Uh, we know a lot of stuff going on here, but you know, whenever we're talking about a triangle, it's kind of nice if we have the height, and we don't have the height of this triangle. Um, we're asked to find the radius. Um, so we're probably going to have to use the area of the triangle in some fashion, but since we don't have the height, it kind of means we're going to have to do something tricky in order to find the area of the triangle, which means we're going to use Heron, Heron's formula. Now, I, I don't remember Heron's formula, so we're going to, uh, we're going to just derive it as we go here. So, um, so let's start by finding the area of the triangle in terms of the uh, radius, in terms of that, that radius that we see down there. And, and basically what I see is I see a way that we can cut this, the big green triangle into three smaller triangles, all right? Here they are. So like triangle one, triangle two, and triangle three. All right, so I see these three triangles. And the way we're going to find the area of each of those triangles is recognizing that this radius right here, as it hits the tangent right there, that's a 90 degree angle. So that's our height of triangle one. Similarly, where it meets that tangent right here, um, so let's see, where it meets that tangent right there is where uh, that's a 90 degree angle. So that will be the height of triangle two. And then similarly, last one right here, this radius right there is hitting the triangle, uh, the yeah, hitting the, the circle right there at the tangent. So that's a 90 degree angle. So that's the height of triangle three. So we can use one half base times height on each of those three triangles to find the area of the entire shape, that entire rectangle. So let's do triangle one. So that's gonna be one half times the base, which is nine times the height, which is the radius. Right here is the radius, all right? And then for triangle two, we've got one half times eight times the height of the triangle, which is the radius. Plus we have that triangle three, one half times 10 times the radius. And that whole thing equals the, equals the area of the triangle, all right? And so at this point, I don't need this right here anymore. I mean, I need, a, I need to hold on to it. So I'm gonna kind of move it up here and kind of stow it away and uh, we can erase all this stuff all right so we we now have the formula for the the triangle in terms of r the problem is we don't actually know what the area of the triangle is so we need to use heron's formula to figure that out except i never remember heron's formula so we're just gonna do it like on natural we're just gonna rough it out here so what does that look like? I'm going to make this a little bit smaller because we don't need it quite so big. All right. And so what are we going to do? Well, OK, so first we're going to drop a line straight down. So that's going to be our height. All right. And uh, I'll label it H and it cuts the base, that nine into two sections. So we're going to call this D and we're gonna call this nine minus D. And this is what I have to do every single time when I know I have to do herons, but I can't quite remember it. So I just have to kind of rough it out and do it. All right, so let's use the Pythagorean theorem to kind of talk about this right triangle right here. And so that Pythagorean theorem is gonna be, let's see, H squared plus D squared is equal to eight squared which is h squared plus d squared is equal to 64. And I'm just gonna hold on to that for a moment right now. And then we have this other right triangle. And we could do the right uh, the Pythagorean theorem on that one. So that's gonna be h squared plus 
9 minus d squared is equal to 10 squared. And let's kind of do some math right there. And so let's do uh, h squared plus, okay, now let's multiply out that 9 minus d squared. And so that's going to be 81 minus 18d plus d squared is equal to 100. So all I did was I did 9 minus d times 9 minus d, and I did all that multiplying stuff, and I got 81 minus 18d plus d squared. Now you'll notice we've got an h squared over here, and we've got an h squared over here. So if I'm thoughtful, I can say, let's see, on the left, I've got h squared is equal to 64 minus d squared. So now I can take that 64 minus d squared and stuff it into this h squared because that's what h squared is. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say, all right, well, that what was that? 64 minus d squared. So that's going to be 64 minus d squared plus 81 minus 18d plus d squared is equal to 100. So really, all I did was I took that h squared and I replaced it with 64 minus d squared because I was allowed to. And now we can see some, some nice math can happen here. One thing I see is that minus d squared and the plus d squared cancel out. And then I see 64 plus 81, 145. So 145 minus 18d is equal to 100. And then I'm going to move the 18d to the right. I'm going to move the 100 to the left. And that gives me 45 is equal to 18d. So d is equal to 45 over 18. And that reduces to 5 halves. So all right, so now I know that my d, I can erase that d, and I can replace it with 5 halves. Woohoo! And so now, because I know on that left right triangle there, <laughs> that left right triangle, that's funny. OK, I've got a leg. I don't know this leg, the height, but I know the eight. So I now have enough information to figure out the height of the triangle. All I have to do is since I've got, I now know that D is equal to five halves, I can stuff that into that D squared. All right, so I got H squared is equal to 64 minus five halves squared. All right, so that's gonna be H squared is equal to 64 over 1 minus 25 over 4. And I did that because I just I just want to get common denominators. And so that's going to be h squared is equal to 256 over 4 minus 25 over 4, 25 fourths. And that gives me h squared is equal to 231 fourths. And I could do the square root. And so that gives me h is equal to the square root of 231 over 2. Whoa, whoa. So now we know that the height is the square root of 231 halves. So I'm going to, oops, I don't want to erase everything. There. And I can replace that h with the square root of 231 over 2. Goodness gracious. So now we know how to get the area of the triangle because the area of the triangle is 1 half times base times height. So that's going to be 1 half times, and the base is 9. And we know the base is 9 because it says so right there. And we now know the height. The height is the square root of 231 over 2. <laughs> Gosh, this is ugly. And so that becomes 9 times 200, square root of 231 over 4. And so that's the area of the triangle. 9 times the square root of 231 over 4. So now we can go back up here and we can replace this A, which is an unknown, with the value of that area, which is known. It's ugly, but at least it is known. So I'm going to copy that because we're going to use it. And we're going to replace that a, which is an unknown, with the value that is known. So I'm just going to come down here. And there is the, the formula. But we're going to replace the a 
with 9 times the square root of 231 over 4 because that's the area of the triangle. Was I right? Yeah, there it is. 9 times the square root of 231 over 4. So now this just becomes kind of like math. It's just, just math that we have, or like algebra that we have to do. And so let's kind of clean it up a little bit. So that becomes 9 halves times r plus 4r plus 5r is equal to 9 times the square root of 231 over 4. Um, let's multiply everything by 4 to kind of get rid of all the fractions. So this becomes 18r plus 16r plus 5r. No, no, 20. Ooh, I almost messed up there. No big deal if I did. It just would have given me the wrong answer, and I would have had to fix it. All right. And uh, so let's add all this junk together. And so we get uh, 18 plus 16, 20, 34 plus 20 is 54. So that becomes 54R is equal to 9 square root of 231. And then, uh, so then let's see. Oh, we could solve, I mean, divide by 54. And so R is equal to 9 times the square root of 231 over 54, which simplifies to the square root of 231 over 6. All right, because 9 over 54 simplifies to 1 sixth. So now we know the value of the radius, except I'd like to know the decimal just because. So uh, let's, let's look up Desmos and, and use the calculator on Desmos. There it is. Okay. And then, so what do we have to do? We have to do the square root. Oh gosh. The square root of 231 divided by six. And there's our decimal. It's 2.533. So our decimal is 2.533. So the radius of that circle is two point. Look at all that work that we had to do is 2.533. So what did we do real quick to capture what we did? First thing we did was we found the area of the big triangle in terms of the radius. You, you know, because we just recognized that this is actually three separate triangles in all. In all. And then uh, we used basically Heron, the Pythagorean theorem, to figure out the area of the whole triangle, which was a number. It was an ugly number, but it was a number. And then we just kind of substituted that in and did some algebra. And that's how we got our radius of 2.533. Man, that was... That was fun. Hey, do me a favor, hit the subscribe, hit the like, do all that sort of stuff. It helped me out. And, uh, you know, I look forward to future problems. All right, here you go. Thank you.